Hello and welcome to NatCon 2022. We're Thursday, September the 15th, and I have yet another rock star with me, Ashley Kaladi. She is a strategic account manager with a heck of a company, Spectre & Co. I love Spectre & Co. I've so always I. loved you guys. <laughs> it's not by accident that I'm there. I know, right? Good people go to great companies. Well, thank you. And you are a good person. <laughs> I've known Ashley for actually quite some time. So when I was a supplier once upon a time, Ashley was a customer of mine on the distributor side. And so Ashley is actually one of those rare people that I'm bringing in today that has this perspective that so few people have. She's worked on the distributor side. She's worked on the supplier side now at Spectre. And even in between that, she did a stop with a tech company that does technology for suppliers and distributors alike in Common SKU and other fantastic companies. So she's always working for great companies. Incredible. Yeah, well, I, I actually pick the places that I want to work. It's not the other way around. Fabulous. So I know I started as a distributor and then I got to a point where I'm like, I think I want something more. So I literally just made a list of companies that I admire in the industry and Spectre and Comiskey were on that list. And it just happened that Comiskey came first and then Spectre now, so. Fabulous. And you know what? We've been talking a lot about our passions as individuals um, because it's important to me to get beyond just the corporate veneer and actually talk to the people that are in these companies. And so you're talking about operating from your heart, right? Essentially, you, you decided, I like this company, I like that company, that's where I wanna work, and you're a creator because you're making it happen. How incredible is that? Is that a deliberate strategy of yours in life on the personal side of things? You see what you want and you're like, yeah, I'm going after that. Yes, yeah, I think you can get what you want, but you have to work for it. Yes. And it's really good to take a moment and sit down and think about what those things are that you want and maybe make them a little bit realistic but have you know your dreams too that and work on steps to get there like what is it going to take for me to get into this position or what is it going to take for me to do this in in my personal life even yes like i've said this before to people but i got to a point in my life so i would say like 20 to 30s i didn't know what my passion was i okay. was maybe 50 percent like focused on my career and the other 50 percent was like i'm just gonna have fun Yes. And then I got to a point and I was like, okay, I'm around my 30s at this point. And I kind of thought, maybe I want a husband and a family. So I made a list. <laughs> and I was like, this is what I want my husband. And then I went online and I like looked for him. And, I found him. and then I was like, now I'm ready to have a kid. So I'm going to work on that. Yes. And then once I did that, and I was like, okay, now I'm going to work on my career. Yes. And I'm kind of spinning off here, but you talk about passion. And I remember, and sorry to put ages on this because I don't think age really means anything, but okay. for me, probably 20 to 30, I was banging around, I was working hard, playing hard, and people would ask me what I do, and I was a distributor at the time, and I had fun being a distributor, I think I, I was pretty good at it, yep. but I would go to like, let's say a party and people would say, what's your job, and I'd say, well, I work in promo, but it's not my passion. Okay. And then they would obviously say, well, what's your passion, and I'd be stumped every time, I'm like, I don't know yet. Like, what is my passion? No kidding. So I think I got to a point, and now I'm getting like halfway through my 30s, just to kind of put a timeline into it. Yep. I was like, wait a second. I can be passionate about this industry. I just have to make it my own and figure out what that looks like. Yes. So I think the, the part about not having passion was not looking at it through the right lens. Ah. And thinking, I don't want to create more landfill. I don't want to... I don't want my job or my life or my job to not have meaning. Yes. So how do I take this and make it meaningful? Ooh, excellent. And so a lot of that was like, well, I need to shift what I'm doing. I need a fresh start. Um, and that's how I ended up at Common Skew. And working there was super fulfilling. Yep. Because I got to talk to people, entrepreneurs, and help them make their businesses better. So excellent. It was super rewarding. I loved doing that. Oh. And then I got to a point there where I, I still loved what I was doing, but I wanted to be in front of people again. I wanted to be on the creative side again. Yes. And so you can be really creative in this industry, products, but also relationships and just different ways to do what we do in a more creative way. Yes. 
My gosh, I mean, you're you're listening Sorry to a, a life story. You're, no, I'm, I'm glad you you're sharing it with me. You're actually experiencing a masterclass here, and I I, I, I am <laughs> actually you? being completely and utterly honest about this because oh, so seldom do we actually have somebody open up their playbook and say, look. It's kind of how I did it step by step. It and I'm just while, in awe of you uh, realizing that and actually actualizing your dreams. It's, it's exactly the point of these interviews is to give you the inside scoop on what's happening with these amazing people at these amazing companies. Now you talked a little bit about your, and, I, and I'll call it alignment, okay? Okay. So you found alignment. I want, I don't want products ending up in the landfill. I'd rather do something that aligns with my vision, my passion. And so you talk a little bit about sustainability. Is Spectre really going down that road with regard to sustainability? And are there more and more products that are coming out that are sustainably minded? And in addition to that, do you take into consideration the supply chain and everything? It's not just a one-stop shop when it comes to um, sustainability. With, what happens in the world of Spectre these days? Yeah, so I'm proud to say I am on the Spectre Sustainability Committee. Right so on. So we have a committee uh, internally from all departments. So we've got representation from sales to product development to factory floor. Like, it's a great group. And I think, it, I know it's the way of the future. And I know most of the suppliers here, it's a big part of what they're doing. And I don't think it's just about having this product that's made from a recycled material. I think it's in everything that you do. Okay. And we don't really broadcast it as much as maybe we should, but it's it's giving you know employees bus passes. It's having spots for electrical vehicles. Ooh, it's cool. Changing the lights in the factory that, so that they're more energy efficient. Yes. It's packaging. I mean, packaging is huge. I. Um, getting off on a... On no, a please go. I'm fascinated. I'm involved um, with an organization called Promo Kitchen. Okay. Um, so their pillars are on education and mentorship. And I had the, the opportunity and the privilege to host a podcast with Denise from Fairware. Oh, excellent. Um, Alex, yes. Uh, who's currently at Chameleon Like, And we were talking about sustainable packaging in the industry. And they are way smarter than I am. I just like to be around those people so that I can absorb some of their greatness um, and then, you know, remember it when I'm talking to people. But, like, they have so much to say about how we can improve things. And it doesn't have to be everything all at once, but all these little steps that we take. Like, if I have the opportunity to visit a client by train, yep. I would take that step instead of drive because it ah. decreases my carbon footprint. Excellent. If I, you know, I'll bike to meetings actually if I can. Really? Yeah. Or Fascinating. If I, if I am going to fly somewhere, I'm going to really maximize like my time in that location so yes. I can see as many people as possible because I'm thinking about that. And that's just a small thing as an individual, as a salesperson for Spectre that yeah. I can do that also impacts our sustainability and our, our footprint on the whole, the whole thing. So. Fabulous. I, I, I love that concept and it's just, it's so holistic. It's not just one area or one aspect. And uh, we were just talking to Chris Turner from StormTech, whom I'm sure you know well. And he was talking about the greenwashing that goes on, right, in all kinds of industries. But I'm seeing a radical shift as I look around right now and so many people really embodying this characteristic of being sustainable in all aspects of their business and you're carrying it right through to even the way that you get to a meeting so oh, yeah. biking to a meeting is fabulous <laughs> yeah. and when you can why not right totally yeah. like so cool yeah, yeah might, maybe you're a little sweaty when you arrive but hey it's all good right um, so good. So you talked a little bit about bringing your creativity into the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, you're a creative person, obviously, yes? Mm -hmm. And you enjoy that. Yeah. How do you bring creativity into presentations these days? Like, how does that happen? Um, because, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of presentations in my time, and sure. a lot of them are a little stale, right? How are you bringing creativity these days into your presentations? Well, I think just having the fresh perspective of never being on the supplier side, yep. I might do things differently unintentionally. Okay, okay, that's good. Um, I think it's really important for people to see product, and a lot of people have kind of moved away from that completely. But if you don't actually see it and touch it, then you can't, you don't remember it. Yes. So something that I like to do in a meeting, if I'm going to show, if I'm walking into a company, I'm going to show them some product, yep. which is part of the job. 
first I want to know what's important to them. Yes. So I yes. don't have a script. I don't have certain things that I have to show them. Yes. And I don't bring a lot. But I want to know what's important to them, and then that guides what I do. Um, I also don't walk in and just throw everything out. I like to like keep it under the table almost, and then do more of a like surprise. Yeah, right on. Because then if you're doing something, it's getting passed around the room, and like let's say it's this water bottle, for example. Yep. They might not buy the exact one, but we're starting to talk about color. We're starting to talk about messaging, like what's important to the end user and how it can be used. And I just think doing that brings up more conversation. And they're, and they're not distracted either, right? Because in yes. life, we're so distracted by everything that bombards us. So I, I really mm. appreciate your technique of kind of putting things under the table and one at a time. Wow, look at this. And yeah. so, so our focus is there, right? And totally, it's really nice to put the phone down get off a screen and I know we still have to do virtual things and I have sure. some tips for that too but it's so nice to be back in a room and my favorite kind of meeting is we're sitting around a table it's like you know having dinner with your friends yes. and the conversations start and yep. that's the best yes absolutely I'm gonna take you up on that offer dinner? you're gonna get no 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 <laughs> no <laughs> dinner, but, <laughs> I didn't mean that <laughs> My husband's a great coach, so too, too funny, too <laughs> I funny. Drinks. I was going to take you up on the offer to actually um, talk to me a little bit about those virtual tips. Yeah. So you were just saying, hey, I'm going to share some virtual tips. Um, everyone wants to know because we're living in a virtual world these days. Mm -hmm. So how are you, you know, rocking the virtual world? So when the pandemic hit, I didn't want to stop networking. I didn't want to stop growing business, like, you know, from whatever aspect. Um, so I really moved on to social media and I, I was like, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to throw myself out there and not care what people think. Ah. And that really shifted the way I felt about social media. Um, I use LinkedIn, I use Instagram, I use Facebook. Um, and it's a really great way to sort of build your credentials yes. and network and, and become friends with people. And I think you need to be authentic. And it works really well for business. Yeah. If you if you care and you're authentic about it. What changes when we get rid of the fear of criticism? Because it seems to me that that's what happened. That was the realization you had. I am going to put it out, and I I'm going to begin to eliminate the way I feel about people receiving this content. Right. Yeah. Like here's an example. Take link LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a business platform and I love it. I think it, like every salesperson, if they have um, the interest in it, should just go for it. But you don't have to, you know, a lot of people are scared that if they're on somebody's page and it's gonna look like they're stalking them. And my thought on that is they should, like you should be on their page and you do want them to know you're there because it means that you care and you're interested in what they do and you might have some kind of business you can do together. Yes. So yes. I'm, I'll reach out to anybody on LinkedIn and just shoot them a message. I'll, I'll connect with them. And I'm not like worried that it looks like, oh, I didn't meet you in person first. Yes. You know? Yes, absolutely. It, I'm being authentic. I think I have something that will help them and their business and we can work together on something. I agree so. wholeheartedly. And from a macro perspective, it's really interesting. It's, it's really no different than analytics that we see on a website, right? So mm. on the website side, we can see who's visiting our website and that's a beautiful lead magnet, right? And I, I know people yeah. sometimes feel they're being stalked when it's like, hey, you were on the website, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to divulge that. You simply give that person a call. It's an opportunity. Hey, how are you doing? I thought I would check in. Totally. You know, are you, are, are you interested in anything that we have to offer these days or whatever that, however that conversation goes. But mm. I like your philosophy of dropping the fear of criticism and just doing it right and, yeah, put and yourself out there. yeah yeah hundred percent and Ashley you're doing that I, I've just seen that from you year after year your success as a distributor your success on the tech side and now your newfound success on the supplier side it, this is a person who's moving and shaking and I, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for you and admiration for what you're doing and how you do it thank you I uh, thank you <laughs> I follow people like you because you're, you know you're the leader. You're doing this stuff, and and I mean we can copying each other and making it our own. Like, yes, yes. That's, that's well, how we grow. well, it's inspiration, right? And mm -hmm. and I think that's what I've learned as well is that there there would have been a time where I would see someone online and I'd, I'd see a hundred thousand followers, and I and I I there would be a feeling of like. Um, 
uh, uh, jealousy, I suppose, right? Yeah. You know, and, and then and then it's like, well, I don't want to take that. And, and uh, but but you've got to flip the script, don't you? You know, you've you just got to really trust in yourself and believe that if I let my real self come out, then the world's going to unfold the way it's meant to unfold. And in that manner, we see people a little bit differently. We become more inspired by them and we take the essence of the beauty that they create and we take those things that, that are aligned with us at that particular moment, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just, it's so cool that you're talking about all of this and I, I think you are inspiring a whole generation of people in this industry uh, by the content that you put out, by this interview and the wisdom that you're sharing right now. And I just, I can't thank you enough for spending a few minutes with me today because I think I people are gonna it. really, really benefit from this interview. This is Ashley Kaladi at Spectre & Co. What's your website address so that the world knows uh, uh, where to find you? Spectreandco.com. Okay, Spectre & Co, S-P-E-C-T-O-R. And you can find me, uh, Ashley Kaladi, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram everywhere on social media. <laughs> Ashley, it's been a, a sincere pleasure. Thank, thank you for you. spending time with Anytime. me. Awesome. And thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this interview.